Okay. Okay. That's much better. Thank you. <laughs> this part so I'm not distracted. Okay. That very clear. Okay. So let's let's go back to the idea that you're stuck. Yes? How can you tell that you're stuck? And I invite you to check right now. How do you know that you're stuck? stuck at the moment okay there's it's there's nothing that I'm feeling feeling stuck about I guess right at this moment good the moment you might have this idea that you are stuck it's because you have an idea what you supposed or not supposed to experience you have an idea yes. how it should look like. Yes. You that's can true. you can question that thought, I'm stuck. Just question mm. who would I be without this thought? And you look after the question because when a thought appears and that's a question, when it completes itself and there is no other thought, there is a silence which is you that remains. Mm. Also now there is an awareness that is listening. Mm. Yes. This awareness is your true nature. Mm. This awareness yes. is not affected by thought or by the idea even that you're stuck. The moment you have any thought, you can question who sees the thought. Mm -hmm. The thought always appears in front of you, isn't it? Yes, that's right. That mm. means you're behind. Mm, that's right, yes. Yet again, I suggest that when the negativity arises mm. is to approach it with a statement and a question mm -hmm. and another statement and a question and another statement and a question and another statement that clears the negativity it's like cleaning the ideas the beliefs because mm -hmm. the statement will allow beliefs to surface to be seen and be questioned if it's real mm -hmm. so continually do that as they as they come up yes if they do do you have an idea that that it is not supposed to come up that they're not supposed to come up. Gee, at the moment I can't answer that question. <laughs> it's sort of strange. I, um, I, 
I guess I feel that things do come up. They surface up. I guess. Um, but at the moment, I'm not feeling that way at all. Um, the all the habits come up in mm. into the surface to free themselves. Ah, okay. The moment you you resist it mm. or fight it, then you actually sustaining it because you believe that this habit to be you and they are real. You can yeah. question, is the habit you, or you are in the background, which is aware? Mm -hmm. mm. Yes. This question just turns your attention to put it in the right perception. Mm. Means you're the perceiver, the ultimate perceiver. And ultimately, the perceiver, which is you, only perceives itself. When it's perceived, when there a notion that there is someone who perceives a thought, that's not the ultimate perceiver. Yet when the thought subsides, you perceive only yourself as pure, aware silently aware mm -hmm. when like I often when you're in that silently awareness there's no sense of um, emotion is that is that how it's experienced? There's just, there's a, it's hard to explain, but there's just a, it's not this emotional wave that's charged within that. There's just this, um, as if there's just the looker without any sort of feeling. That's right. There is a sense of... Is the feeling, yeah. There is, when you experience yourself, which you always do, so it's not that you're in it, you are already mm. it. There is just the mistaken idea that you are an individual entity with a name and a form and habits and history yet mm. even when you mention emotions from childhood that appear let's mm. take a look at it right now mm -hmm. see your childhood just one moment of your childhood that you're somewhere what do you see i just see a young girl looking in a mirror. Okay. It's just a, a picture in your mind, really, isn't it? Yes. Mm. So the, quest yeah. the question, is your direct experience right now, is that you are a picture? Mm. Mm, no. You're I don't not think so. My direct experience... Right now you experience, okay. you, you experience mm. something right now, yes? And it's not, yes. it's not something you imagine. Because when no. I invited you to take a look at your childhood, you saw an instant of picture. Yes, yes, that's true. Mm -hmm. So just be able to discern between the image of who you think you are and the experience which is experienced right now which you don't imagine it's a sense felt experience yes. mm -hmm. so now let's let's explore a little bit this experience right now 
yes mm -hmm. so just like your eyes are looking at the image look inside for a moment without moving look inside and watch if you have a thought and don't move your head you can speak except don't move your head so look inside clearly you can look inside your head if you have a thought there is a small like um, there's more voice that comes up okay so listen to the voice and then around it sense what's around the voice is still there is a voice no there just seems to be a, um, an emptiness or a blackness really okay it's not even blackness is there a thought right now there's only the repeating of the the um, the question great mm. after repeating the question watch what remains and look into it doesn't seem to be anything there as such just there's not a yet can you deny that there is a sense of experience there is a sense of silence or peace I'm I'm asking I do not know what is your immediate experience Just share it so I can see what is yeah, it pointing at. My, my immediate experience is there doesn't seem to be any thoughts as such. It okay. seems pretty peaceful, really. Ah, it's not good. Mm, it's peaceful it's actually yes. a unshakable peace so just mm. can you hold the attention on that sense felt experience <laughs> yes stay with that Even if a thought appears, it appears within the field of this unshakable peace. Yes, that's true. This, so. unshake, this unshakable peace is who you truly are. This is your inmost being, your true nature.
It's a sense of peace, not only in the mind, but also in the body. Right, because this, this unshakable peace permeates every cell of the body. This is embodiment of, of your beingness through a physical form without identifying yourself with a conceptual image of a body. Now, this is available to you because it is you and you never lose yourself. When there is the notion that you lost this, it's just an idea appearing within this field of awareness. That's when the mind has to discern and question the thought if the thought is affecting this unshakable peace, if the thought is actually you, or you are in the background, or when the thought dissol dissolve, who remains? The more the mind inquires into your true nature, the more it dissolves and rests in the beingness of who you are. When you experience the knowingness of who you are, you just hold the attention on that continuously. And in the beginning, there will be the notion that the mind comes out of it and then you question and it might return into it. Yet just know that every thought comes from you and returns back to you. You don't need to try to make the thought return to you. When a thought appears, it completes itself and disappears back to you. If you can hold the attention on you instead of thought, this is awareness is aware of itself by itself. Mm. Also, you cannot deny that the experience is other than yourself, isn't it? No, you can't deny it. Because you don't experience yes. somebody else right now when you experience a sense yeah. of peace. Mm. So discriminate between that which is peaceful mm -hmm. and thoughts that cause the mind to be stressed mm -hmm. and start the discernment like that. And it might gonna be good to really listen to as many videos in the YouTube on the channel that I share the knowledge in different ways. This would bring clarity to the mind. And if you would have doubts and questions, then we can speak and I would clarify so you so the mind would continue to question itself and you start recognizing and being rooted and established in who you truly are. Just like when there is the false identification thinking that you are a physical form, a woman, undoubtedly, you want to experience who you are and know yourself to be this unshakable peace in the same manner. So this false identity 
that I am a separate entity just gets weaker and weaker and just dissolves into who you truly are. So when a thought arises and it, um, there's some identification with it, then do the practice of saying a statement and then following by a question and, and don't answer the question and just look, look from within yes. and see it and... Mm. So that it can be like... Always start from the identification when, with the statement. The thought is real, is it true? I am a thought, is it true? It's like all the thoughts that the mind itself would not dare to bring into the surface and think. Yet it identifies with these thoughts. So now you, you, you bring them, you challenge the, the mind. I am the mind, is it true? When the thought disappear. I don't exist. Is it true? I need to have a thought in order to exist. Is it true? The thought is affecting who I am. Is it true? I like the way that you really don't have to answer them because in a sense they answer themselves. And, and when the question opens the gap and in that gap when there is no answer mentally the real answer remains which is silence. What is your sense felt experience? Although you talking is happening and there's a dialogue in the background, what are you sensing? In the background, there's a sense of, of um, there's a, a sense of joy or happiness there because um, it just, you know, something feels. Uh, almost a sense of relief to just have it open um, by going inside and to put those questions in an open platform, so to speak. And then they seem to just, um, yeah, a sense of joy arises at um, not actually having to answer them, I guess, in some sense, that they just... Uh, just and, um, cannot feel attached to them or not even feel attached to the answer as such. It's just, there seems to be openness there. And I guess that's sort of making me, makes me feel lighter. And um, that's what I'm feeling at the moment, a sense of um, smiling on the inside. Mm. <laughs> A deep sense of gratitude. in the past um, where people would say they go into yourself and and when you do go into yourself 
there wasn't anything there <laughs> as such, but it still didn't feel like um, the same feeling that I'm getting now. It still felt like I was still playing a game with myself of some kind. Yes. Uh, or the mind searching for the mind inside and still saying, yeah, I'm, I'm here, but you can't see me or something like that. It just seemed like it was gameplay. But um, this felt experience now, it's it feels like... Um, It feels very different to my explorations in the past. Wonderful. Mm. So the, the feeling stuck that just came up the words, it just seems to be um, like a word in my mind, just a word coming up. Um, they're just words <laughs> as such mm. yes just a thought mm. it's an empty thought actually it's... yeah mm. yeah it's that's nicely put an empty thought it certainly doesn't hold any credence as such <laughs> as it did in the past yes or mm. Can I ask you about the breath and the cycle of the breath? Yes. In the body, I can see myself watching the breath really opening. Um, it seems to, when I'm watching the breath, it seems to have a very calming effect as well. That's good. It just to remember that you are behind it, even watching that, witnessing that. So the breath and the thought, they go together. So when you observe the breath or work with the breath, it might quiet the mind. Yet when you stop, the mind resumes identifying itself, like it is a real entity. So as long as when you inquire, and you inquire into your true nature, this illusion is revealed that that which imagines itself to be a separate entity is not your real innermost experience this image appears inside you and you are not in a relationship with that thought this sense of awareness this field of awareness where thoughts appear and disappears within it awareness has no relationship with it just like the screen has no relationship with any image projected upon it or any movie. So it's good when you work with the breath to calm, yet it would be more profound to bring a statement and a question when there is the idea that the mind needs to be calm. 
See, when you calm the mind, still the same belief is now in, in the bottom. It's like the current, undercurrent, still running the show. When you bring the statement, you see the statement. You see the false notion. You see the idea and you question, is it true? Is it you? And the breath and that belief system that it's coming. What question would you ask to the, to get that? Um, it's a subtle, very subtle difference there. The breath is calming the mind. The question: Do you want to just experience an impermanent calming effect, or do you want to? realize that you are permanently aware unaffected by thoughts and images of mm -hmm. the mind mm experience just takes it to a, it's another level isn't it yes mm. this is why it's really key to start having that recognition of yourself of your true self and it takes no practice to directly experience yourself because it's already you And I encourage, inspire people. Let the mind be saturated. Listen to the videos. Some would be more interesting than others. Some will open the mind and reveal a different angle. This is really key because inquiry into the knowledge or inquiry into yourself which is yourself is also absolute knowledge, not mental. It it's consists of hearing. Hearing over and over removes the ignorance. And reflection removes the doubt. And when the inquiry persists continuously, the mind turns to be one-pointed. This when it removes the false identification. And then you experience who you are. So all of it are, are, all these aspects are inquiry into the self. So I encourage people to go and saturate the mind, even sit and just listen and find that space within you that never moves while listening is happening. And then come back if you have questions and I'll clarify as best as I can and I find okay. at least on the Skype calls only few people come back again and again and question and raise doubts and bring what they see and share so they can continue to go deep or be rooted in themselves this is a lifelong commitment so yeah. don't be hesitant to contact and, and we can take a look again together. And the more you take a look, the more you see from within, the more you establish in the, in the experience of who you are, the less false identification there is. So 
all these habits have to gradually dissolve into the beingness of who you are, which is already you. I will do as you've, I will saturate it. It has been a lifelong journey for me and um, I will saturate myself in all the, the um, podcasts and the videos. Yeah, I'll look at the YouTube clips. I have had um, looked at some of them, but I will uh, endeavour to totally immerse myself and if something does come up, um, I'll thank you and I'll be in touch again through the email. And I really appreciate you taking the time and um, it's been really wonderful. <laughs> That's how the mind, because the mind is the only false entity that is confused, the knowledge brings clarity into the mind. So when you clear about the confusion, then the mind is clear and not confused. And the more clear it is, means it's more subtle and subtle. It peers through the illusion. It sees and then the presence of awareness which is you can shine through and reveals itself to itself and then you can hold the attention on who you truly are. And sometimes when you speak with, with somebody who see and is rooted in who they are, just a word or two can direct the mind to rest within you and you would recognize yourself for being yourself. Or if there are doubts, if I've seen these doubts within me and I went through it, then it's very easy within the mind to clarify them. So you don't get with the notion that you're stuck or that that you think even you progress and all these kind of ideas. And because right now your experience is not intellectual, isn't it? That's right. It's not intellectual. Yes. And this is really key because this is how you get established in your beingness of who you are. Wonderful. We can stop for now. You can contact us via email and we can set up again if you wish Skype or Gmail or the FaceTime, whatever works so we can be in, in communication like that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I wish you all the very best.